Hey guys, this is a follow-up of the last video, the local module example, but today we're using a remote module. So this one is stored in GitHub and trade as DevOps in a repo called modules. I'm planning to put all my modules there in this repo. And within that, I have a folder called log workspace, which is where the logging.tf and the variables.tf is located. So here's the format you can see for your own GitHub. So just github.com slash organization or your name uh, and then the repo and then you do the double slash and then the path to the module. So lastly, you see this question mark ref equals branch name. Um, if you have a feature branch or any other kind of branch, uh, you can add that in here. Um, if you leave it off, it just uses the main, which is what I'm doing here. So that question mark ref, uh, oftentimes you'll see like a version 1.0 or 1.1, whatever. Um, which is just a tagged version. So this is how it works for GitHub. It's just very simple, github.com slash your name slash your repo, double slash the folder that your module is located in. Oftentimes, if you're working in an enterprise environment, it'll be git colon colon https slash slash your company's gitlab.com, or maybe there's a private server they have set up uh, slash the, the name of the module, like vnet, for example, dot git, and then you see that question mark ref equals again that we talked about. So you can see if we run an init here, it does actually pull it directly from git, and it goes to that log workspace folder, and then names it log workspace module, which is what we have here. And of course, there's nothing in here. I don't have any local modules. Uh, but if, if I go into my dot terraform, you'll see it's pulling that log workspace module that we talked about. There's that log workspace folder. And then there's the two files that we looked at in the last video. It's nice that I don't have to have them locally. Just whenever I init, they're downloaded via SSH to my dot Terraform folder here, and then Terraform can use them. The only thing is if you need to make a change, obviously you'll have to go to, you'll obviously you'll have to go to Git and make that change or push your changes to Git, and then you'll have to re-init. So if you run into an issue where you've changed something and it's still using the old version of the code, double check that, make sure you've updated in Git and you've also run a re-init. And lastly, let's just do a plan here to show you that it does work. So there you go, just like if we had the module locally. All right guys, that's all I had for this one. Just a quick video showing how to use a remote module in GitHub. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.